Over the last three years, I've made a lot of videos on treadmill motor power supplies, specifically using an SCR voltage controller and the requirement of running a choke. In that time, there is one question that keeps coming up over and over and over again. And that is, can you tell me how to figure out what specifications I need to get the correct choke? And that's what we're going to discuss today. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. This video is going to be mostly lecture style, just me talking, and there's really not a lot for me to show you as a video. But I am going to go over the key things that one needs to Keep in mind to make sure that they get the correct choke. First and foremost, what does a choke do? Well, a choke is basically just a coil of wire with some sort of core that allows for a magnetic field to be created when current is passing through the wires. What that does is helps eliminate noise and power spikes. Why do we need one in the situation of a treadmill motor and an SCR voltage controller? Quite simply, the SCR voltage controller feeding into a bridge rectifier produces what is not exactly the cleanest power. And the motor choke is what we use to filter out those power spikes. And in doing so, we prolong the life of the motor. So I've done several videos showing the efficacy of a motor choke. If you look into the back of the motor where the brushes are making contact, you will see significant sparks if you are running an SCR type power supply without a choke. You will see a significant reduction in sparks if you run the choke. Every time we get a spark, that's a tiny amount of the brush or it's a tiny amount of the copper ring that the brush is riding on actually burning up. So it makes sense that if we're reducing sparks, we're prolonging the life of our motor. So that brings us to specifications. If you look at any catalog, any place that is selling chokes, they're going to have two specifications. The first one is Henry's. And the second one is amps or milliamps. Let's start with amps and milliamps. And this is what separates a choke from a motor choke. And I'm here to tell you, you don't have to know anything else about chokes. If it's not labeled as a motor choke, it's not going to be big enough. This is a small choke with tiny little wires on it and it is rated in milliamps. Now, what's a milliamp? There is 1,000 milliamps in a single amp. So if this is rated at, say, 100 milliamps, this is capable of handling one-tenth of an amp. Now, most of these treadmill motors are at least 15 amps, and some of them can be as high as 25 amps. If this is only 100 milliamps, it is way too small. And the motor will probably not turn at all if power is flowing through this. And if it does, it's not going to run correctly or be working properly. And I've had enough people use a tiny little choke like this and email me saying, why isn't my system working? that I've actually created a whole other video talking about not using a tiny little choke. Ultimately, if it's not rated in high enough amps, it's not going to work properly. And we know right then and there that it is the wrong choke. Again, if it's not labeled as a motor choke, it is not a motor choke and it's not gonna have high enough amperage rating. The reason for that is most chokes are used on sensitive electronic equipment. A lot of two-way radios have a choke in them. Audio equipment will oftentimes have a choke. And that is because the choke is designed to filter out specific frequencies and specific ranges of noise. 
And that ability to filter is measured in what is called a Henry. Now, I'm not an electronic engineer. I don't know the math involved in calculating the correct Henrys for your application. But I also know that it really doesn't matter on a motor choke. So whatever the Henrys are that this is designed to filter out, that is where it filters them out the best. Now, the frequency range on either side also gets filtered out, just not quite as efficiently. With audio equipment, with sensitive electronic equipment, with radios, specific frequency filtering is extremely important because those specific frequencies are going to create noise and interference. But a motor doesn't care if there's noise. A motor doesn't care if there's interference. All we're trying to do is filter out the power spikes because it's those spikes that are creating the potential to wear out the system faster. So basically, I've given you everything you need to know, specification-wise, to pick a motor choke. One, if it doesn't say motor choke, it's not big enough. Two, if it's not in the correct amperage range, 15 or above, and it does need to match the motor, it will not work. And three, it doesn't really matter what the Henrys are, because if it meets the first two criteria, it will filter out power spikes, and your motor is not sensitive enough to need such specific specs as other equipment. So how then can you pick the best possible choke? Well, that's simple. With chokes, the bigger they are, the better they work. So we have this choke that does not work at all. And you've probably been looking at this the whole time going, well, that kind of looks like chokes he's shown in other videos. That is a motor choke that I have shown in other videos. And you can see how much bigger that is. You can see how much thicker the wire is. It can handle the amperage. And the bigger the choke, the bigger the field. In my experience, the better it does at filtering out the types of power spikes that are causing arcing at the brushes in a motor. And then we have this guy right here. That is hands down the best choke that I have. And there is basically no sparking at all when I am running this choke, which again lends to the concept of bigger being better. The wire is heavier gauge than the wire on this smaller motor choke. The bigger the wire allows for more amperage. The smaller the wire, typically more resistance you're gonna have. So even if this wire is big enough, it still may slow the motor ever so slightly, where having wire that is heavier gauge is going to allow the motor to spin at its max capacity with that power system. The core is bigger, so everything about this is doing its job better. I realize there's not a lot going on in this video as far as things to see, but I felt like I really needed to make this video because this question keeps coming up over and over and over again. And so if you're out there looking for a choke, maybe now you have the information to make a more educated decision. And if it does not say motor choke, it's probably not gonna work. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.